incredible geological features, beautiful coastline, New Zealand's Maori culture on full display, and friendly faces <laughs> everywhere. Welcome to the Bay of Plenty. National Geographic sent my colleagues and me to Rotorua and Whakatane to discover what makes this part of New Zealand's North Island so unique. Photographer Erica Larson visited Tapuia, a center for Maori culture and geothermal wonders to explore. Kiri, please tell me about this, this amazing, really, really magical place. So we have so much to offer here at Rotorua, you know, forests, lakes, walking, and also experiencing our beautiful geothermal around the area here at Rotorua. And the people. And the people. <laughs> Really and beautiful. our geyser is ready wow. to go, guys. <laughs> Listen to it, it's so no. beautiful. I found through my work, wherever I go, there's always a guide. It might not be an official guide, but yeah. it's always a guide that, that can um, translate and introduce and allow you to feel a landscape. So, yeah. so your job here is really important. It is. In my family, there's four generations who have all guided. Uh, we have become kaitiaki or guardians uh, of, of all the areas. So it's our responsibility to take care of our whenua, to take care of our land. When I'm walking along this pathway here, I'm walking on the same path as my ancestors. And when they guided visitors through the area here, it's just something that came naturally. So you'd say the knowledge is, it's, it's natural knowledge. Yeah. It's here, yeah. you know it by, it by living by it. By just experiencing it and living it. It's beautiful. It's so yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. For me, there's so many moments in the world, they're so loud and you come here and you can feel, you can feel a little more human. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. You get all sorts of visitors. When they're going on a guided tour and then they're going, wow, this place is bigger and than what I thought. It's not just something that I see in a book. I can feel it, I can touch it. They do go away uh, leaving here to Puya as part of my whanau as part of my family, um, because that's who I am. Meanwhile, artist and author Christoph Niemann visited the National Carving School at Tapuia, where the traditional methods of Maori carving are taught. So we're here in the only traditional Maori carving school. Yes, formed in 1926. Oh, so that? That's the 1926. What happens? You start with a... So you start with a story. So it means like the, the beginning of carving is speaking and, and speaking, telling stories. Yes, yeah, exactly. And listening to songs, listening to karakia, prayers, it all contains history. In the process of carving, it's a lot of repetition. It's kind of like attention, but it's also, you know, it's so really repetition. like the manual labor yes. and like getting to know and feel yes. for, the, for the wood. Do you remember a moment where you felt, okay, there's... I start to have a con connection here. It's when you realize that sound is everything. Sound? Yes. So it's about the sound of the work, of the chopping? Yes. So it's... And, and that, so, you, so through it, the sound, you get a feel for the wood? It relaxes your mind. Okay. So that you can actually carve. And, and so, so it becomes the, a rhythm. Yep. And so it's about rhythm, pulse, and your heart settles into that rhythm. What are we looking at? I mean, it's, it's very, very so this is, this impressive. Is a, it's a memorial post that was meant to celebrate the 100th landing at the Gallipoli Peninsula. This one is about the technicalities of war. This is about the victims of war. So it yeah. like, goes from the very um, kind of tangible here yeah, yeah. into a, like a more abstract uh, right. spiritual yep. world. Okay. What are the best reactions that you get from travelers from far away places or from, from, from closer places? There's this idea that you come here, everybody's dressed in a pew pew and you know, they've been here forever and a day, but no. Most of us have ancestors that have come here trying to find heaven. All sorts so of there's things. A, there's a connection from the world coming here and then... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and that's, that's what Kiwis are. Yeah. They're a mixture of a whole lot of people that have come through this, uh, to this country. No, but this is beautiful. <laughs> and it's, it's interesting to look at the art through that angle, and I think also coming as a visitor and yeah. looking at it through this angle. Yeah. 
Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Up the road from Rotorua is Ohope Beach. I took a walk along the water and a coastal track nearby to meet my fellow explorers and some friends for a very special dinner. I take this coastal walk that's absolutely stunning. You know, every 10 stairs or so, you have a lookout that is giving you a view of, you know, these mountains in the background that are so, they're almost, it looks like a watercolor. Wow. Endless, it feels like just water that goes on forever. Kia ora really good to have you here up at Kapu Te Rangi, the home of Toi Kai Rako, our famous ancestor. So Toi would have occupied this place around a thousand years ago. Um, our hangi is just about ready, our feast. yourself. <laughs> This looks fantastic. Can you tell us a little bit about the hangi? Yeah, so the hangi is um, obviously our traditional Māori way of cooking food or feasting. Ours is unique as far as I know because we actually set the hangi in the ground and bury it over, so it's actually subterranean. Ha is breath or, or also flavour. Mm -hmm. And ngingi is a very old word for to burn, to make smoky, to make fire. So that's the origin of the word hangi, so a flavour uh, okay. that is smoky, has been burnt. So today when we came up, the first thing you notice inevitably is this beautiful island here. Can you tell me a bit about it? Yeah, so that island is uh, Mautohora. The island is now pest free. It's a protected wildlife reserve. Neil here is actually um, heavily involved. Yeah, so there was a whole bunch of work. If you look at old pictures of Motuhora, actually, it didn't even have very many trees on it. The Department of Conservation and the Iwi Natiawa worked really closely together. Um, there's a whole bunch of trapping and work that was done to make it, make it pest-free. A lot of our native birds and, and animals in New Zealand evolved without mammalian predators. Mm -hmm. So Motuhora, because it's pest-free, we have birds on there that are actually extinct on the mainland. Mm -hmm. Everything's good. The food is absolutely wonderful. Can you tell us a little bit more about your history of cooking and, and what we're eating here? Um, my father always instilled on us that a well-fed body is a well-fed mind and spirit. And if you really love what you do, as in cooking, it'll show and it'll always taste lovely in your food. That is wonderful. And that's, and that's what our father works with always me, instilled. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> 